we're going to now look at some more properties of logarithms. And specifically, we're going to use these new properties to write a single log as a sum or difference of logs. And this goes back to what I said before about relating these to the laws of exponents. So we're going to start with our rules first. If we have log base a of the quantity m times n, if I times the m and the n, then I can separate these outside into separate logarithms of log base a of m plus log base a of n. So this is the log property rule, the log product property. If I take the log of a product, then I can sum two separate logs. In a similar vein, if I divide, then I just get log base A of M and log base A of N. The division, the log quotient rule, or property, says we subtract them. So anything that's being times is being added, anything that's being divided is being subtracted. So let's show just a few examples of these. Let's suppose that we have the log base 4 of 9 times 5. Well, since the 9 and the 5 are being connected by a time sign, this breaks down into two logs, both base 4 with the plus. And then we just take the 9 from 1 and stick it in 1, and we take the 5 and stick it in the other. And so we, break, we have broken this up into two separate logarithms. We could also do this if there's variables in lo involved. So log base 6 of 5w becomes log base 6 of 5 plus log base 6 of w. And this makes it, especially in the days before we had calculators, this made it much, much, much easier to figure out what these logs were because you're looking at the much smaller number on the table and then adding numbers together rather than trying to multiply out and looking up on a big table how to get a specific number. Okay, we could also look at the natural log of p over 3. Now because of the division, this is going to be the natural log of what's on top minus the natural log of what's on bottom. And so this is using these simple properties, but we've got one more property, and this is the power property of logarithms. And it says, if we have log base A of m to the r, well, remember that this power means that we've got the repeated m being multiplied together, and using the product property that we talked about earlier, this could be log base A of m plus log base A of m plus dot 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 plus log base A of m. So there are r of these log base A of M's being added together. And repeated addition becomes multiplication. And so the real rule is, if we have a power of something inside a logarithm, we just move that power to the outside. So for instance, if we had log base 2 of 5 to the 1.6, we just grab that power, move it to the front, and get 1.6 log base 2 of 5, because multiplication is a little bit easier than powers, and it makes our log smaller when we try and look it up in the table as well. Well, we can combine these rules all together. Suppose that we have log base 3 of 9m to the 4th over the cube root of n, and we want to expand this into the summer product, or summer difference, rather, of logs. So we just start out by taking our taking care of our division first. This becomes log base 3 of 9m to the 4th minus log base 3 of the cube root of n. Well, now that we've done this, we need, still need to expand this piece, and we need to deal with this one because we don't like the cube root of n inside a logarithm. Remember that the cube root of n is the same as n to the one-third, so we rewrite it as a power rather than a radical. And notice that I separated out the 9m to the fourth into log base 3 of 9 and log base 3 of m to the fourth. 
Now we want to get rid of the powers and where possible we want to simplify our logarithms. So log base 3 of 9, what do I raise 3, 2 to get 9? That becomes a 2. We're then going to add, we move the power to the front, 4 log base 3 of m power to the front minus 1 third log base 3 of n and we now have a sum or difference of logs from our original.